Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I wanted to discuss the recent shootings that's been happening around the country. And, um, you know, first I want to send my condolences to the victims and the victims' families. You know, it's unfortunate when these type of things happen. Um, as a society, we just got to do better and we got to care about each other more. That's why I make sure I always end my videos uh, expressing how much we do mean to one another and how much we got to look out for one another. But this video is more of a reaction to Marcellus Wiley. If you guys don't follow him, there's a link to his page in the description. Um, there's also a link directly to this video. So this is my reaction to his video, which is about the shootings, but it's also about the right to bear arms. And if you guys haven't noticed, there's been huge campaigns going on around the country about uh, banning, you know, weapons and particularly assault weapons and things of that nature. And I just want to, you know, start this off by saying, you know, I, I think gun ownership is our right. There's nothing wrong with it. I think the issue, like most things in this country, is you need um, rules, right? And you need uh, to enforce rules and you need screenings for anything that can harm or kill, you know, people. It's just, you know, the same reason why our, we have a food and drug administration. Um, and we can talk about the lack of regulation that's applied to pharmaceutical industry. But, you know, we're going to stick to, you know, these mass shootings for now. But um, yeah, we just need proper screenings, right? Uh, there's nothing wrong with responsible gun owners, right? It, it, people want to protect their families. People use them for sport. There's different reasons, and we don't have the time to, to list all of them. But I, I'm not against gun ownership, and I never would be. Um, and I think that's where the country is headed, and I hope it never gets there. Right. So, so let's listen to what Marcellus had to say, and I'm gonna get my reaction. Because as always, he, he you know he always has that more level-headed point of view where he sees things from both sides. Unfortunately, uh, all too often we're talking about these type of stories, but I really have to bring these attention and really have to discuss these because I don't want our country to become desensitized or even more desensitized to these tragic events. And it seems like it happens a lot. I know I grew up around gun violence and. Growing up around it, it just didn't seem like it was on the public's conscious enough. And now it seems like it's being talked about more than ever, but we need actions to change these as well. So let's talk about the latest incident where a gunman kills eight in a rampage at a Texas outlet mall in the nation's 200th mass shooting of this year. And I just want to pause it there because, you know, the the emphasis on 200, right? The the emphasis on the 200th shooting this year is, is just, you know, it's important. That's way too many. Um, and you just sit back like, 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 why is this happening? You know, and it's to the point where I, I'm hearing that, you know, countries are starting to warn their citizens about visiting the United States, which is like, you know, growing up, most of my life, it was the opposite, right? It was always be careful when you leave the country. Now people are saying, be, uh, you know, be careful when you visit America. Um, but yeah, 200, you know, man, we just got to do better. We got to start valuing life a lot more. And, and we got to get to the root cause of why people feel the need to kill and harm and hurt others. And hopefully... That's what this country focuses on instead of taking away guns. Like I said, I, I want regulation on who can own a weapon, uh, you know, more background checks, more screenings. Um, but I'm not saying take them away from qualified, uh, responsible and accountable owners. And y'all know we're only in May. Gunman fired into a crowd at a suburban Dallas outlet mall Saturday, killing nearly eight people and injuring seven others as 
the images of the severely wounded shoppers, you can see them all on social media, all on the news, all right? And obviously, I played for the Cowboys, and I lived in Dallas before, and have been to the this area before right and so obviously it's haunting to anybody because then you put yourself in that place dallas or not have you been to a mall before you've been to an outlet before cars that go by you know all those kind of things now this is how you start to go down the slippery slope you start to go into places of prejudice you start going to places of stereotyping this is where you start to become distant from your neighbor because now you don't trust people in this world right and that's like that's an important point right there, right? Um, imagine the fear from hearing about this, from being present, um, from being directly connected to it, right? If it's a family member or someone you know, the trust will start to fade, right? You you won't trust people. You'll live recluse. You'll live in fear, you know, and. That's not the life that we we're intended to live, right? And whether you're a religious person or not, you, you know that that's not the way to live, right? And um, like I said, that's a really that's a, that's a, that's an important point that he just made is that we're losing our trust in one another. We've lost, at least a lot of us have lost trust in our country, in our leadership, and you know. The anarchists and the, the global world order, you know, this is what they want. They want us to destroy ourselves. They want us to celebrate the destruction of ourselves and the destruction of others. And they're sitting back because they know they only have to push the right buttons. And we're the ones that's going to commit the acts, right? And that's what we got to be mindful of, right? We, we got to hear these horrible acts taking place. We got to get involved in our communities and see what we can do to prevent them. But we can't lose faith in one another because once we do that, they got us in our country. And you don't trust just going to the mall anymore as just, hey, how much am I going to spend? But more, will I make it home is also a thought or a consideration. Unreal. At least three of the survivors critically injured gunmen were fatally shot by the police officers in that area. Okay, so they said he pulled up in a gray Honda Accord at the premier outlets in Allen, Texas. And then the man began firing. Unprovoked, just start firing on people walking on sidewalks outside the outlet center. Now, it's a popular shopping spot with all the big stores there. So you're obviously you're going to see those type of people and crowds, right? Everyone's going to be there. Now, there were two other mass shootings on the same day, Chico, California and Columbus, Ohio. All right. Now, a lot of people were trying to be focused on. We had a sporting events. You had F. So that's three shootings in one day, y'all. 200 on a year. And like he said, we were only in May. Like we gotta let that sink in, and 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 we can't, like he said, let become desensitized to this, right? Because that's what gonna what's gonna happen, right? You're gonna hear about it so much that you're gonna think it becomes, you know, it's part of everyday life. And we know nations that live in in you know these kind of conditions, right? Where it's mass terror, there's war, the, you know, civil war, there's hatred, there's mass killings. And we always looked at those as the places you don't want to visit, you don't want no part of. And that's happening to our country, y'all. This is supposed to be the number one and the best country in the world, right? Because of our cultural and ideological, ideolog because of our cultural differences, right? And our beliefs that we can come to, that we still have the ability to come together and support one another and compromise and figure out the best way to coincide and coexist and live with our fellow neighbors, despite our differences. And we're losing sight of that because, you know, we're just out here killing each other. And for what? And, and you know, the, the scary part is, is, is this 
is this part of a bigger scheme that we're not even aware of? You know, I don't like to go down those conspiracy theory rabbit holes, but you know, it's just when you, when you have this many, it makes you wonder like what is really going on here, right? Is this something that's in the food? Is this something that's in the drugs? Is this something that's in the rhetoric? What is being spread to cause this level of self-hate? Because that's what it is, right? Because we're all human. So to want to kill your fellow man is self-hatred. One, you had Turkey Derby. You had the NBA playoffs. But this is still going on between our borders. Okay, so now let's talk about the mass shootings and the frequency, right? 200 already in May. It's averaging out to be about one a week. And what's happening is if you look at the database about these mass killings uh, and the mass shootings, because this was a mass shooting and mass killings, they're defined differently, right? One is four or more people shot and one is four or more people killed, obviously. So the numbers are just staggering right now. And the mass ki killings are happening in public settings we all know as well. Okay, so now let's talk about this because we lost some lives and not only lives, but children's lives as well. As you guys know, I'm a partner in Argo, Alliance for Responsible Gun Ownership. Um, there are just a few things that we have to do. First, we can't be on the fence with this issue, right? And I think I am primed to be one of the people to speak on this issue just because of how much of my mental space was preoccupied with the fear of getting shot growing up. Like you always hear that, you hear that adage, you hear a line from some kid in the inner city, you know, like, ooh, what's, what's, what do you wanna be when you grow up? I just wanna graduate, I just wanna make it past 18. 18. And yep. I know that it got sensationalized, but that was real. Like in terms yep. of my- And I just wanna stress that too, depending on where you grew up, that is real. I grew up in uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. This is before it became gentrified and, you know, it was, you know, definitely daily gunshots, right? And um, daily killings. And I was desensitized to it in a, in a, in a, in a, to a degree because I had a good childhood, right? I really didn't grow up in fear. Like you had these moments, obviously, where things went bad, but it, you know, I guess like, you know, you can't just become desensitized to what's going on around you. And, but I would also say that it was different. Um, I felt like even no matter, it was still wrong, but people killed for a little bit more of a purpose than they do now. Now it just seems like, um, you know, people aren't just shooting, you know, for, uh, you know, this isn't beef. This isn't gang related. This isn't, you know, this isn't the underworld, right? This is, this is common people who just woke up one day and just decided that they're going to try to kill as many people as they can which is even scarier, right? Because even, even in the underworld, they have codes, right? They have a certain level of respect that they follow. And what's happening now with these mass shootings, there's no code for this, right? There, there, there's, there's, no, there's no rules of the streets to this. This is just straight up massacre. And so the goal wasn't to make it to 18, but my fear was I wouldn't make it to 18, if you get me. My goals were much loftier and greater than just living past the age of 18. But there was a tremendous fear of what I make it. I've been through three, four different incidents of being shot at, bushes moving, etc. I had guns drawn on me once, twice, etc. And that was in the 80s. That was in the 90s. And here we are, 2023 still dealing with this issue. Um, we need to get off the fence of this issue and we need to get from the extremes on this issue, right? For the people who are saying ban guns, that's not happening, right? And that's also absolving you, the individual and people and gun owners of the responsibility that comes from it. And that's my point also, right? When like, we just gotta be responsible individuals and, and start to care about one another because you know banning guns is not the answer people have a right to protect their homes protect their property you know protect their loved ones um but 
some people don't have the mental or emotional capacity to own a weapon. And that's why I said we got to have better screenings and better background checks, right? That's what needs to be enforced and regulated, right? And, and you know, more mental health screenings, right? But the answer is not ban weapons. Like, that's, that's foolish. It, I don't think it's ever going to happen, but it should never happen. And the fear is, is that that's where we're headed, right? Because those are the voices right now that, I, that seem like the loudest. It's the people who's calling for weapons to be completely banned. And I, I don't think they truly understand the negative ramifications that might come from um, a, if we lived in a world in a society where you weren't allowed to own a weapon to protect your property or your family. That comes with gun ownership, okay? And then we're also not going to just say ban guns, but we're not going to give a free for all. Now you can just show up with an ID and buy some gum and a gun, right? We got to really look at closing the violent misdemeanor loophole. That's one of the things we can do in legislation. Pass some state level gun permit laws, okay? You guys want to talk about actions? Because a lot of times we just sit there, thoughts and prayers, our hearts go out, but we don't take steps, okay? So let's take some steps. Implement a state and federal background checks. Yes, you heard me. That's right. We're going to know who you are. We do it for credit. You do it for credit. What, what kind of credit are you going to have if you're getting shot at or you're killed, right? Who cares about credit? State and federal background checks and enact the red flag laws with due process protections. Now, I do respect the due process, right? We're going to go through your history. We're going we're gonna to see who is deemed responsible and who's not. And I know that's judgmental to a point. But we're going to do it with respect to the due process. But those are some action items and there are more. But those are high level action items that you need to start being mindful of and starting to also make sure who you vote for, who you listen to, your local politician, etc. is in support of action items. Not just the same old thoughts and prayers goes out to and then supporting the lobbyists who are enabling this type of gun culture. It's time to stop it. R goes on the mission. Be on the mission with me. So, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, stop it right there. Um, that's the end of the video. <laughs> but, yeah, you hear what he's saying, right? He's, he's also saying, like, this is why uh, voting is important. Getting involved in your local elections is really important because a lot of our politicians and our so-called leaders, they just have talking points, right? But they're not trying to make actual change. They're not trying to uh, make life better. They're just, you know, pretty much just hyping you up like, yeah, 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 I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Vote for me. And then you vote for them and they don't do anything, right? And, and that's just been the trends. They, they're just bowing down to the almighty dollar or whoever's paying, you know, them the most. And then we live... And, you know, with the aftermath of these decisions, right? Because a lot of the people that have the wealth and have the money that are paying these politicians, you know, they have private security. They don't need to own a weapon because they got people that shoot and kill for them. And that's not something that we have, right? So this is, like I said, this, I, I don't want this to come out as, or come off as, I should say, like, I don't care about the lives that were lost because I absolutely care about that. And that's the most important thing, right? But the next part of that, right? The second layer to that is understanding that we can't go too extreme and start banning weapons because people do have a right to protect themselves and their property. But we just have to make sure that we're allowing responsible and accountable people to do so. And we're just not giving weapons to anyone. Now, obviously, the a lot of the, the uh, businesses that sell guns are, aren't going to be happy, right? Because if you add more restrictions or more regulation, it makes them they lose profits, right? And that's the unfortunate side of our society, right? Is that people just take choose greed over what's right. And I don't fault any business for trying to make money, but at some point there has to be a cost associated with loss of life, right? And and the cost can't be it's okay to lose lives for profits, right? That, that's especially when it comes down to children. So tell me what you guys think. Are you for the banning of weapons or are you maybe you just want certain weapons banned? 
or, or maybe you 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 know you're for the right to bear arms you know tell me what you you know tell me what you believe to, uh, you know leave your comments below if you like the video hit the like button remember the uh i'm gonna have a link to marcellus wiley's video if you guys don't follow him you should do so um gives our really good content y'all and if you like this video hit the like button if you want to hear more subscribe today and as always please take care of your minds take care of your body and take care of each other that's all we got peace